Felix here. Good morning to you. Is it the end of the world? No, not quite. But jobless data are out in one minute. We also had jobless data yesterday, which is pretty much a catastrophe. And we're going to talk about that, what that actually means and where we're going with this all. Uh, before we get cracking on anything, of course, none of the following is financial advice. You know that by now. I just give you my sort of view, point of view as an old banker and all that kind of thing uh, to give you a little bit more insight to what's going on in the market. And um, we also have data, 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 data. Um, we're just coming out literally in a second here. We'll wait for it as it pops up. Uh, we also have a marvelous giveaway, which is literally happening only today. I'll draw the results tomorrow. We're giving away five one-year gold memberships to Trading Floor Whispers, which is our premium newsletter. And uh, it's written by a an investment banker with 20 years experience, one of our head coaches, uh, to join. Uh, and that newsletter is worth $730 a year. So to join, just go to felixfriends.org slash FB group. In the group, there is a post. Click on one link and you basically uh, participated. And then I'll draw the results tomorrow. Links are also down below in the description. This is what the post looks like inside the group. You literally just click up, click on there, and, and you, you, you are part participating in that. So I look forward to drawing five of you guys as winners there tomorrow. Now, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting for this. And it is out and interesting. Jobless claims are higher than expected. Continuing jobless claims are higher than expected. Job cuts, however, are still less than expected, much less. But the initial jobless claims are 211,000. We were expecting about 195,000. So that number has crept up here again for once. And we are above 1.7 million unemployed again in the US. Now, if you take into account yesterday's data, and let me take a quick screenshot of this and then we'll hang on. And then we can look at this against yesterday's data. So this is moderately good news for the market. Here is yesterday's data above, and here is today's. And what does it tell you? Well, let me move this up a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so today's data we have, and I'm going to color code this on the basis of a cold-hearted stock investor, not somebody who cares about people, whether they become unemployed, which I do, but that's the way the Fed sets the rules, so we kind of have to go with the rules here, just moving myself around a little bit on the IG feed. Okay, so we're expecting 195,000 people to be unemployed, uh, newly, freshly minted unemployed. And we got 211,000. That's very odd to put a green tick against that. I get that, but that's essentially the way the market works. So it's positive. The job cuts are lower than expected. That still implies a very tight labor market. Uh, so no one's laying anybody off basically. The continuing jobless number is above 1.7 million. That's about 60, 70,000 more than we were expecting. But yesterday's data, the job opening data, which is a little bit more forward looking, because if you think about it, a company, the first thing they're going to do is cut open jobs, right? If they think well, maybe business is going to go south a little bit, they're not going to start laying off people because that's complicated, time-consuming, emotional, problematic, whereas new jobs that haven't been filled yet, just go on the website, delete the posts, and you're done. The job openings are at 10.8 million yesterday, significantly higher, about 200, 300,000 jobs higher than we were expecting. So that's terrible for the market. And then job quits are lower. Now, job quits lower is potentially a good sign because you tend not to quit your job unless you thought it was very easy to get another one. If you think I can just waltz into my competitor across the road, get paid 10% more, then you're very likely to quit. If you think the market's going to get worse, then you won't. So there we have it. Three green ticks and um, two red crosses. I think it's a fairly balanced uh, situation going on here. Um, Carl, you just got a sign, 400 USO, pre-market. Really? I've got the same position open still. I was going to close it today. Um, well, you know what to do, right, Carl? Get out of the assignment is usually what we do. Um, 
Joe, appreciate that, Carl. Okay, pe peculiar. How do you get assigned early morning? Must have meant you got assigned yesterday. Um, interesting. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Kyle. Appreciate that. Um, right. So, yeah, that's kind of where we are with that. Now, I, I want to run through a little bit more of the macro here. But before we do that, we should have a look at, first of all, the stock screener here. Let's have a look at the heat map. I think that's probably the easiest way to look at it. And look at pre-market, make this a little bit more color coded. Um, Apple green now, Microsoft, Google are somewhat in the red, Amazon somewhat in the red. Um, Alan's day ish, right? NVIDIA flat, Meta is green now, 0.8% up. Uh, if we look at the SPX, that Oracle trade, by the way, I tried to set up yesterday. For those of you guys in the community, it didn't fill. So I'll have another look at it today if I still feel like uh, that, 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 that being a good idea and all that. So futures are flat, literally flat. And 3994, not going anywhere. Let's see the reaction to the data here that we just got. You see, the market thought that was good data. And, and, it, and it was in a sense. It was in a sense. More unemployment, market likes it. But not managing to get above 4,000 here, bouncing off again off that line. If we look at the QQQ, um, did someone get the data before everybody else <laughs> at 8.04? Uh, then here at 8.30, again, market thinks it's a good thing. Now coming down again a little bit here, still negative, 0.1% down on that front. Now, Simon in the US happens at midnight EST, says into the wild. Um, can do, yes, indeed. Uh, Yeah, Cal, you're probably right. It probably happens at the end of the day and you didn't, didn't notice it. I still have that position open here. You see that USO position here? Um, still there. It hasn't been assigned yet. Here it is. It's not looking like a real winner. These are sort of like very low probability flutters, really. This is what this is. So you don't really expect to make money. But if you do, you make so much that it offsets the fact that you don't make a lot of money on most of the other ones. So yeah, we'd have to see what we do with some of these here, um, especially the NVIDIA trade. That's the other one as well. That's a bit of a flutter. Um, and flutters don't always come in as winners. That's just the way it works. But I wanted to walk you through a few things here. Um, as we're doing a giveaway for our tradingfulawhispers.com newsletter, um, and I thought this morning's one was particularly good. I thought I'd walk you through it because, so this is actually literally on the website. If you go to tradingprovisors.com, um, uh, you can see that. If you want to participate in the giveaway, we're giving away five one-year gold memberships to this, then links down below. Just join our Facebook group. And there is a post in the Facebook group right at the top. Where did the Facebook group go? Here it is. Uh, here, you see this one? And all you're going to do is basically sign up there, like the post, as uh, 10 of you have already done. Uh, so do that, and I'll be drawing winners tomorrow. Um, I've posted it here as well. Three of you have liked. So uh, check that out. Uh, we will, of course, admit you to the group. We have to do that manually uh, to keep the, the spammers out, essentially, here. I see six of you guys have already done that. So uh, do that. It's going to be great. And we're giving away literally five of these. They cost $730 a piece. So um, I think it'll be worth it. This is this morning, and look, we don't always write doom and gloom newsletters, but we actually want to give you a real perspective. And this is basically the update that a former market maker who is part of our team writes. And this is the sort of thing that you would get if you were a fund manager. Your broker in the morning would basically send you over a note or get on the call phone with you and walk you through that. Um, he says, I've seen my sh share of market cycles for the last 30 years. I had a front row seat for the Asian banking crisis in the 90s, the dot-com bubble in 2000, the great financial crisis, the COVID crash. So it's fair to say I have some insights how markets perform in times of crisis. And right now, I think we're facing an impending crisis. Um, Asian banking crisis, basically, um, the Nikkei, the Japanese index, lost 35% over 12 months. It took 20 years for the Nikkei to recover. The dot-com bubble, I remember that vividly. I was working in a dot-com company at the time. Um, basically, the Nasdaq tech index went up 130% in 1999 up to March 2020. And then the two-year, 10-year inversion signaled a recession six months before the market topped out. And that's what we have right now, right? We've got this massive, massive inversion. The Nasdaq cracked and it fell 80%, 80%. It took 15 years. 
to come back to that. Yeah, not kidding. Um, would have been a great period to accumulate a lot of NASDAQ positions because you could have bought NASDAQ at very, very, very cheap rates. Apologize, my shirt keeps popping open today. I think I need a new shirt. Um, <laughs> it's not that sort of channel yet. It's a little early in the day. Uh, great financial crisis, 2007 and 2009. The Fed has hiking their rates. The two-year, 10-year bond inversion, again, flashed recession signals for months. And eventually, the S&P dropped 58%. And that took about uh, a year and a half or so. Again, took six years to reclaim those highs. COVID crash um, was one of those odd ones, really. And um, essentially, the ten-year, the two-year, ten years inversion again was close to inversion in late 2019, as the Fed had just ended a tightening cycle. Um, hiking rates, hiking interest rates pretty much always leads to a recession. Very, very rare that it doesn't. And this is, are the interest rates that we are. We've never done it as steeply, as quickly as this time. And we're expecting them to do more, right? That's what Papa Powell said yesterday in the last two days. An inverted two 10-year is essentially telling you what's going on here. So this chart is the two-year, 10-year inversion. The gray area is a recession. When it goes up, typically you get a recession. When it goes up, you get a recession and bigger recession. And that happens pretty much every time. Now, the recession warning is the highest we've ever seen. 71% probability of that happening. It's literally worse than the 90s. It's just insane. And um, oh, yeah. There is also the debt ceiling, um, that little thing here. Uh, you're seeing the CDS spreads, essentially the credit default swaps are back to where we were in 2011. If you remember in 2011, the US was downgraded by Standard & Poor's um, to a banana republic. No, not quite. It went from AAA to AA minus, but there's a downgrade. A downgrade's expensive, cost the US billions of dollars and in higher interest it had to pay. And right now, the market is flashing exactly the same sign. Also, the stock market, do you know what happened in 2011 when that happened? Well, the stock market dropped 18% in July. So, we're kind of looking at the same scenario here again, right? Interest rates were 0.25% back then, not 4.75% right now and expected to go even higher. Um, here we got, again, what we looked at yesterday, the terminal rate projections for December this year. We're now looking at pretty confidently being somewhere between five and a quarter and 5.75% interest by the end of this year. So the whole thought of a rate cut this year doesn't look to be happening and that's what's re should be repricing markets. This is not booze, by the way. It's just water. I find I drink more out of a large glass. The largest glass I have is a cognac tumbler. So um, hence that glass. So why is nobody bothered about it? This is VIX. VIX isn't flashing any fear, panic indicators, is it? And why has the stock market gone nowhere for 11 months? Well, Elliot says, uh, my honest take is that most investors are either too young to remember a real recession or when bonds outperformed stocked, or they have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> um, so I believe we are weeks, if not months away from stock markets repricing at much lower valuations. History tells us that rates are always one step ahead of the stock market. And when rates move this high, this fast, something breaks. And right now, rates aren't just one step ahead. They are so far in front that equities need binoculars to see them. What would change my view? Well, non-farm payrolls coming in below expectations for the first time in 11 months will be a start. That data set's coming out tomorrow, so make sure you join us live for that tomorrow. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Perhaps even consider smashing the like button if you're feeling frivolous today. Uh, we've had payroll beats. You see that here? Insane, right? Payroll, there it is. Non-farm payrolls are basically going up for 10 months in a row. Softer unemployment data would reduce the odds of a higher rate cut, rate increase. Uh, however, the US labor market remains tight and next week's CPI doesn't show disinflation. If it doesn't, the pressure will be on Powell and co to engineer a slowdown. And that means higher rates and lower stocks. So he's saying, what would I buy in the current environment? And he says, puts. 
<laughs> puts, puts and more puts. And I'm not saying this is not financial advice. You shouldn't obviously run out and do exactly that. But I think it's worth the um, kind of slight reject in our mindset that, you know, do everything doesn't always go up in a straight line uh, forever after. Um, there are significant kinks in this. And I think um, this looks like a potent potential kink. I, 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 I'm totally with him on it. I, I don't really understand why the market's doing what it's doing. So let's have a look at, here is a, the QQQ weekly chart, right? And have a look at the U.S. Um, maybe two-year yield. There it is. And let's invert that. Let's turn it upside down. And usually the two have a pretty close correlation. Let me just see if we can we just check this a little bit to uh, you know make that happen. Some something like that. Obviously there are there are time periods when you know you get a little bit of a of a, of, of a crack, like because rates here didn't do anything, right? They were just flat, 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 flat. But when rates start going up, normally the market goes down with it. And this is the gap between the QQQ, the NASDAQ, and down here, almost off screen, is the two-year bond yield. So that gap, I mean, this is not obviously a scientific way of looking at it, but, you know, it signals we are vastly overvalued on stocks. That's essentially what it's saying. Um, and I think that's something to bear in mind and something to think through and something to think, well, I have a 10, 20 year time horizon. I don't care. I'm just going to keep buying cheap stocks and um, they're going to get cheaper and cheaper. I don't really care. I'll average out. Totally fair view. But if you're not that mellow guy who buys forever, then I think it's definitely something to like really chew on here. Markets, Christy says, markets are oddly mixed about the data, not really jumping. Um, Jan says, sell calls. Also an opportunity, yes, uh, to do that. Although pots are actually quite cheap. You know, I'm usually a seller, but yeah. Uh, so if we're looking at, um, let's get rid of the two-year yields here and just look at the QQQ again. You would expect, the market thought this was really great data for us to have a rally, but it isn't enough good data because... What we've had yesterday was mixed data. Where is it? Yesterday we had more job openings than expected, but a little bit less quits. So that was kind of like, okay. But the more job openings are a real problem. That's more forward looking than the job data we got out today. And then today, essentially, we have a little bit more unemployment, but we have also less job cuts. So, I don't think this is really like saying things have really turned around here. You know, if we'd gotten an extra 100,000 or something jobless claims, maybe. But the difference here is 15,000 or thereabouts, which is pretty much the sort of thing that they would just revise within a week. It's not really like statistically that important. Uh, Danzo is, is teasing me with, uh, with Mullen. Now that everyone's expecting a recession, does it manifest itself or will it do the opposite? Um, it depends on whether it read its self-help books and whether it's, it's very good at manifestation. Recessions are not, okay, the more you expect a recession, the more likely it's to happen. Why? Because you tighten your belt and um, you spend less and therefore you help to tank the economy. So actually, the more expectation there is of higher rates and recession, like 73% probability that we just saw, the more likely this is to happen. You're lucky I just hit the mute button there. That would have blown out a few eardrums otherwise. Um, let me see any questions here. NASDAQ tanked 0.5% since the data rallied. Yeah, yeah, rallied indeed. Unless you inverted the, the chart like I do. Um, Yeah, Credit Suisse, I was looking at that this morning too, Peter. Uh, so Credit Suisse dropped another, um, what, 6% today or something like that. Essentially, they had a chat with the SEC yesterday and the SEC told them something that they didn't like and they're delaying the release of their quarterly earnings or their annual earnings. Um, 
release that's rarely a good sign i mean really rarely a good sign i think if you could yeah it's just uh sod's law isn't it everything that can go wrong will go wrong everything is going wrong for for credit Suisse at the moment it's at all-time lows i i also looked at the chart i not really sure a high probability strategy of trading that i looked at the options before there was very little liquidity um you could potentially i don't know look at a butterfly or something like that where you pay 50 bucks if it goes down some more to four or five dollars you might make 500 or 800 or something like that that might be worth looking at but i haven't done it and it's obviously a very very high risk strategy christian how do you increase probability for calendar spreads um okay uh, christian probably uh, ask that on the discord but essentially very low volatility that's really the, the, the place to do them i did a i did a group call on calendar spreads a little while ago shirts popped open again which is a little embarrassing isn't it um yeah essentially that's what you want you're looking at lo lo volatility there um nine out of ten friends are tightening their belts and paying down credit cards well that's a good thing i mean i think i think from a personal point of view that's a good thing but from the economy's point of view of course that's a bad thing hito wants a video about buying bonds that's questions come up quite a bit so i appreciate that um how to buy you mean government bonds right treasuries essentially Note, note taken. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. And Funky, everyone you know has dropped Netflix. Well, finally, people are listening to me. I take full, full credit for that one. I canceled my Netflix years ago. Uh, Nicholas, is it safer to hedge your stocks with puts or investing in calls in indi indices? Well, a hedge by its definition is is more like a, like a, like a buying a put, right? Obviously, they expire and there's a cost to that, and you kind of have to factor that in. Whereas, if you are um, buying calls and indices, you're essentially saying you hope that they're going to go up. That's kind of the, the way it is. Um, there is something called the collar trade. I did a masterclass on that a couple two months ago, uh, which is kind of the way Wall Street does it. So they buy puts about three months out for very very low cost to hedge like a really really negative event happening so they don't put it five percent below the market but like 20 30 percent below the market and that's very very cheap to do and it's i think something something definitely worth looking at oh puts and indices uh you're saying well you kind of want to look at like what's the cheapest hedge right i think that's always what to look at so um Usually, people would hedge the index, so they do it on the QQQ. If you're more of a tech investor, you're more on the S S and P. If you're a little bit more broadly spread, that's typically where you do it, and they can be very, very cheap. Look for like the next quarterly expiration and have a look at what that would cost you. Um, but yeah, usually it's like I don't know, hundred. You kind of I, I normally look them at them. I kind of want them to be fifty bucks for a per contract. Uh, that's kind of what I would normally look at. Uh, and then that's usually a relatively cheap cheap way of doing it. One video would be awesome, says Lisa. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Darren, less CNN, less Fox News. <laughs> Turn it off. Seriously. Uh, they're trying to get to you and your mindset. There's always some nonsense going on somewhere in the world. There's always a proxy war somewhere in the world. And it's 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 very sad and terrible, but it very rarely uh, leads to the end of the world. So um, I'm a bit of a cynic on it. I, I, I think that's largely about the armament industry wanting new orders. Uh, Felix, are you not worried about the 16.9 trillion debt of individuals? This should be deflationary enough. Yes, people have far too much debt. You shouldn't have any consumer debt, like zero, none. Consumer debt is a curse. There's really no need for having it. Now, debt on your assets, so say a mortgage, is also not a great thing to have. I think, I think you should also get rid of that. Mortgages shouldn't take 30 years to pay off. Mortgages used to be five years long in the 70s. And then 
the financial industry thought, you know what? What if we collected interest from those suckers for 10 years? I know I will do that. Yeah, yeah, let's try it. And they did. And then they said, oh, well, let's make it 20 years. And then they laughed and they thought, probably drunk over drinks in the evening, thought, do you think we could push a 30-year interest mortgage? Do you think people would fall for that? And they do. And it just means you're paying so much more for your house. And But you feel that, I'm not talking about you, obviously, but people obviously feel that they need to you know, buy a Fendi bag or a, buy a late, the latest car or whatever it is. And, and therefore, they are spending money right, left, and center that really they should just be paying off that house with. I'm, I'm, I'm not a pro, pro debt kind of a guy. Um, Darren, <laughs> brilliant. Um, 50 year loans next. Yeah, who knows? Indeed. Who here is 100% debt free, says Andrea? You want a poll on that? Okay, I'll, let's do a poll on that. It won't be many, I don't think. So don't feel bad about it. It's just like, who is 100% debt free? Me. No one. There we go. Let's let's find out. Um, well, the, the, the no one would be that it isn't you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but I think it's an amazing place to be, debt free. Is it better to do a butterfly instead of a put for a hedge? A butterfly isn't isn't a, isn't a hedging instrument, Stevie. Okay, Kyle, you love your 30-year debt for your rentals. Okay, that's a different story. You're running a business essentially by doing that, right? You're not, you're not living in it. Uh, you are basically um, making a yield differential between the rent you get in and what you have to pay the bank. Um, and that's good. And if you live off the cash flow you generate, that's also good. Though you might want to look at if you shortened the duration of your debt, you'd be paying a lot less over the lifespan and if you could finance that with the rent, might still be worth looking at, right? As the final outcome, it could be quite attractive. Old chunk is debt free. Um, well, you have a loan of 2K, okay. Debt is a form of willing slavery, indeed. Danzo is debt free, brilliant. And Teddy is too. Um, so a fair few of you are actually, right? 40, 50 people so far who voted. Ah, that's pretty amazing. 50-year loan. Yeah, you laugh. It's probably coming. Glitch life. You're sitting on student loans. Yeah, those suck particularly. Those really, really do suck. Um, but yeah, focus on getting rid of it. All of it. You have debt on 0% interest. All right. That's um, that's pretty sweet. If that's fixed, then that's a pretty good thing. Um, Debt-free for seven years now. It's like an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting here, isn't it? <laughs> uh, by the way, guys, if you haven't already entered the um, giveaway, uh, we're giving away five uh, gold subscriptions to our Trading Floor Whispers newsletter that costs $730 a year. Um, all you got to do is join the Facebook group at felixfriends.org slash FB group. Uh, the link is also in the chat, but I'll just post it here again. So you can just click on it. It's also in the description. Um, I will be drawing the winners from that tomorrow. So jump on that. And um, yeah, very, very simple to join. And I think it's literally that newsletter that we just saw. Uh, it's, it's some of that, but it's also we actually talk through individual trades uh, to kind of educate and explain what's going on there. Um, okay, let me see any more questions here. Maros says it's tough to be debt free in Scandinavia. Maros, it's tough to be debt free everywhere. Um, don't make your environment an excuse for what you want to achieve. If that is what you want to achieve, I'm not telling you what you should be doing, but we can always say it's tough because of this, it's tough because of that, but it doesn't mean you can't achieve it. Savia, do you buy electronics on 0% interest from John Lewis? I wish you would stop that, honestly. Buying consumer goods that have a lifespan of a couple of years and that you probably don't need. I mean, you don't need a latest blender or toaster or something, really. If you don't have the free cash to do that with right there and then, 
I wouldn't buy it. Very simple. Error driver, man after my own heart, paid a 30 year mortgage in 15 years. Debt free, expect for a small mortgage, says Lisa. That's very, very cool. I keep chipping away at that mortgage. And hey, AR here, he's only got 3K left on a student loan. That sounds like an achievement. So well done on that. Uh, Gabriel planning to buy a house. Look, I'm, it's not about that mortgage debt is 100% bad. It's just you have to be responsible around it, right? And you shouldn't go in it with a mindset, this is going to take me 30 years to pay off because that's just what the banks want and that's how they make a lot of money. But that really is, shouldn't, shouldn't be your, your, your um, intention. So make a plan for how long it's going to take you to pay it off and then do it on half that. And Reed, you're completely right. Um, debt amortization. We're actually working on a on a on a program around debt, uh, which will be a part of our new, the, the, the new community. I think it's really amazing if people really understand exactly what you're saying there, Reed. Uh, Jerome, you're debt free. Brilliant. Well, then Jerome is on a boat in the Caribbean, so I didn't think you had a massive mortgage around your neck, <laughs> Jerome. But it's still amazing. Uh, well done. Old Chunk, you're quite right. If your mindset isn't in the right place, whether that's depression or something else, grief or something, move away from the trading desk. Absolutely. Um, very, very important. Your mindset needs to be really, really clear. Well, don't be driven by FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, every bubble always comes with that. Everyone's a genius. And then the bubble eventually pops and then you know they're no longer a genius best sleeping aid in the world says andrea andrea you already kicked off something like that uh, lost in bkk you don't have a facebook account well um sorry about that that's the that's the way the uh, the giveaway is structured lost in bkk uh john friedman it's a rational argument you make that you're saying you think you can make more, more money in the market than um, what you're paying for your mortgage. Depends very much on what you're paying for your mortgage, right? If you go into the market now and you're paying 6 7% plus for a mortgage, that's probably a challenge. But if you're paying like, if you have an old locked-in mortgage and you're paying a percent or two, then that's probably a reasonable argument. And uh, M4, yeah, I agree with you. Celebrating unemployment is wrong. It is, absolutely. It's not what we want to be doing, but that's the way the market works. So there we go. Uh, you just need to approve me when we sign up to the Facebook group, Michael. Absolutely. And I'm sure we are, we are on top of that. Um, but yeah, we will, we will approve you all. Don't worry. We'll do that very shortly. Um, Darren, house is a house. Everything should ever be in the market. I think there's a balance here, right? I think... Owning the place you live in isn't really an asset because you're not going to rent it out. You live in it, right? But it does provide you a level of security. And if you've paid it off, it provides you a relatively low cost level of security unless you live somewhere with crazy real estate taxes. Um, so I think there is, a, there is a sweet spot in there. It isn't one or the other. It's probably a bit of a mix. I'm generally a fair fan of, of diversification. Um, Being debt free is a mentality, indeed. Rich Dad, poured out states debt is good. Yeah, but he says it in, in an investment concept context, right? He's not saying go max out your credit card and, and, and buy, buy a load of junk. Um, he's basically saying buy real estate assets, use a mortgage, probably do it through a company to remove yourself from, from some further risk. And then the rental income from that pay down the debt. Um, there might be tax reasons for why, why you might want to maintain those debt levels. That's also reasonable. But that's like a business. That's a different kind of argument here. We're talking here really largely about personal consumer debt. So living in a place that's got a 90% mortgage on it, that's not really a great idea. And Kyle, absolutely we agree with you on that. Well, we really kicked off a debt, debt discussion here, did we?
Uh, Giovanni, you're very kind. I appreciate that. Um, drop me an email, Giovanni, um, and and um, gladly gladly have a chat with you. My email is in the um, is it in the description? I don't know if it is. I'll pop it on the screen here for you. Uh, it's Felix at GoToAcademy.org. Very simple. You guys are all very welcome to email me. I will. I do read all emails. I do reply to reply all emails. Felix at GoToAcademy.org. There we go. See that, Giovanni? Uh, just drop me a line. Uh, I'll definitely reply you. SPY is about 400. Stuart is the only one reminding us that there is still a stock market out there. We're just in like dead land. So QQQ is up 0.4% at the moment. Let's have a look at the S&P. And guys, I have to actually jump off because I have a call to run to, but I really appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't already signed up for the giveaway, please do. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.